Are we on? You're on. It says right here on my phone. Oh my goodness, we are on and live on Zoom. Hey. I just love technology like we were talking about, right, Jeannie? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, hi everybody. This is Ernesto, licensed marriage and family therapist and creator of Cav Family Therapy and filmit.com and Cav Academy. <laughs> so much. Is that funny? <laughs> I've got three things. You know, um, for those of you who have been following me, I've been all about talking about money and taxes and things to really look at your finances in, in a, a scope of things, right? So you can understand a little bit more about the process of you and money. And I'm really excited about this interview because I met, Jeannie, when did I meet you? Uh, uh, it was like November 2018. October, oh October 2018. It was at um, the Philadelphia Not Your Typical Psychotherapy Summit. That's right. That's right. So um, I, I was, actually, it was the Get Seen Summit. Oh, Get Seen Summit. No, you're right. right. That's it. Get With Seen Summit. With Katie Keats May. Correct. Yes. Uh, Uriah Guilford and John yep. Clark. I remember Clark. that. Yes. yes, yes. Yes. Get and, Seen Summit. That's it. And since then, you've had some process, right? And I, I'm so excited to talk to you because... One of the reasons why you have a very unique, unique brand. You're a family therapist, right? And a CPA. Mm -hmm. And you just told me before we got on that uh, your CPA license were, was inactive for how many years? Uh, over 12 years. Over 12 years. So yeah. before we move on, uh, I'll go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm Jenny Schottmiller. Um, I was a CPA for, for a number of years, and then um, I had a bunch of personal events happen, and I was going to be staying home with my premature twins, and I decided to leave the... Uh oh, you froze on me. All right, she froze. Oh, there you go. That I had been helped. So I had been... Um, my life... Okay. I don't know. Oh, there we go. We're good. Here we go. Yep. I we're can good. see you. Okay. Okay. We're back. All right. So I, um, there go being a therapy client transformed my life and I got an opportunity to become a therapist and the family therapist and couples therapist was the right fit for me, but I thought I had left accounting behind me. And, uh, thanks to, uh, Katie May, I realized that I had actually something to offer other clinicians in terms of my accounting knowledge. So um, after sort of starting and seeing that this was actually going to take off for me, my simple profit business, I decided to reactivate my CPA license. And thank God you did. The, 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 here's the, the benefit of it. It's not just being able to say I'm a CPA. It's that I chose to do all of my credits and tax, small business related tax issues. So I took 80 continuing education credits in 2019, all in tax, simply so that I could help. Uh, you people like you, other clinicians, therapists, counselors, um, know what to do with their private practice, how to get the right answer. You know, I, I gotta say, um, lately I've been attracting a lot of uh, clinicians and financial counselors and fin financial advisors because I've been so open about my own process. And I can tell you now, money is such an energy thing, right? Yeah. It's not, mm -hmm. it, it, and when taxes come up, what is the actual emotional response that we get? Uh, overwhelmed. <laughs> scared. <laughs> scared. I can't do it. The thought, I, the emotion is overwhelmed and the thought is I can't do it. Exactly. And it's so paralyzing and it's terrifying. But, in, you know, when people like you are out there to help the mental health community and, and to really educate us, it decreases that type of, of, of anxiety level, right? Yep. And, you know, one of the examples I like to give is how overwhelmed were you when you were about to walk into your first therapy session as a therapist? Mm -hmm. How overwhelmed were you? Yeah. You know, like I remember the, I, I had a family. My first client was a family and I, I, the, I could just feel the feelings when I think about it. Yeah. But by my 50th session, I wasn't like that. So the tax is the same thing. Mm -hmm. After you start learning and understanding, um, it becomes less overwhelming. Yeah. So, you know, I've been so focused on money lately and, and how to uh, utilize credit cards, how to um, make sure that you keep track of your um, business expenses, all of those things. And I create these summits in family vacation spots. 
where you can take your own family, you can take yourself, do a tax write-off, right? And then walk down to the beach and just chill. That's it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? So it, it's not the normal conferences where, you know, we go to a conference and then, you know, that's it, you go. But my intentions is number one is to make connections and uh, provide a place where you can have actual self-care yes. and then get C quality CEs after. Yes. Um, you know, so I, that's where I want to go with this. But I'm so excited to talk to you about the, the, the taxes and the expenses that we need to keep track of for 2020. So let's go into that conversation mm -hmm. and hopefully our friends here will have some idea. I yeah. will have, um, for those of you who are looking at on Facebook right now, I will have her, uh, um, Jeannie's link to Simple Profit. Mm -hmm. Simple Profit. Website. Please get a hold of her because I'm telling you, you will breathe a sigh of relief. <clears throat> and, uh, and also, just to plug here, if you haven't um, uh, uh, registered for the Non-Typical Psychotherapist in South Florida, the link is also going to be there. Our keynote speaker will be Mike McCallowitz. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone sign up. I'm going too. I'm so excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, all right, yes. here we go. 2020. Jeannie? 2020. What are you going to deduct in 2020? First thing you're going to deduct is the not your typical psychotherapy summit or in, in Florida, right? That's the first thing. And you're going to plan it so that at least 50% of your time is the conference because you want to, if you're going to have it also be a, a mini vacation or self-care, then you're going to want to have it not be like, I can't go seven, I can't do eight, 10 days on a trip and only have two days be a conference. Mm. The primary, the prim, primary purpose needs to be the business conference. So I believe your conference is three days. Is it mm -hmm. four days? Three days? Three days. Three days. So uh, and you can count travel days. So, you know, maybe a six day trip <laughs> be fine because mm -hmm. you get to count the travel days as, as a business day. So maybe, maybe you go for five days, six days and you, back end it a couple days for just you. So that's the first thing you're going to deduct is your travel. And I want to like on this note, let's think about being a business owner doesn't have to be just drudgery. We all work hard. We work so hard. We give so much. We're helping people. We're trying to make money, but we can have fun too. And that means exactly like you said, connecting with really cool people who have a lot to teach us that we can really get energized. Then we come back home and we're ready to just kill it. Yes. You know, we're ready to just work so hard in, in, in a meeting. <laughs> Excuse so, me for coughing yeah. here, but no, I, know. Cool. I, yeah. I wanna I wanna repeat this again. Fifty percent of your business expenses when you travel. Okay, just keep fifty percent. So fifty percent of that has to be primarily Yeah, well fifty percent of the of the date. Okay, so of it. the date. So you don't want to be like I'm on I went away for a month and I took a one day conference. No, that's, I took a conference on my vacation. That, that makes sense because, yeah. so let's say on the first day, you arrive on the first day. And that's I, a business day. That's a business day. Probably. Okay. And then, so the re, the way that I structured the conference is that um, from 9 a.m. to let's say 3 p.m. are all conferences. So anything that you do after that is yeah. all up to you. But that day is a it's tax, a right? Day. That's a business day. So count your business days and make sure that you have at least, you want to ideally have more business days than personal days. So a personal day would be, I'm not traveling and I don't have a conference to go to. Got it. So, um, yeah. So like you book on a couple extra days at the beginning, a couple extra days at the end, wh whichever way you want to do it. So Got it. just want it to be the more days for business. That's awesome. Yeah, are so personal. But then you're going to take all your business deductions. You're going to deduct 100% of your flight. You're going to deduct 100% of your hotel on the conference days. So your conference, let's say the last night, um, well, I don't have a flight that night, so the next day is a travel day. All that hotel is deductible. But if I stay two extra days, then I'm going to pay for those two days myself. Got it. For got the it. hotel. But anything business related, including my parking at the airport. Wow. If I, my miles to get to the airport and back after my trip, I'm going to keep track of those and deduct those. I'm going to deduct my meals while I am traveling, <clears throat> except for my personal days, I won't deduct my meals. So I'm going to be able to deduct a lot of expenses for your trip. Wow. For your so conference. when I went to Italy, mm -hmm. I went to Rome, I, because I'm a videographer, my tax guy said, you know, you better be doing some work. And he actually kept track on when I was doing it. So I was working in the morning or sometimes in the afternoon. 
but I was filming videos. I was also doing consulting. I was doing some payroll stuff. Um, so I was actually doing some work when I was in Rome uh, or Italy. And that gave me legitimate tax write-off because I was doing work. And actually I was doing a little bit more work because as a videographer, I was filming, I was doing some promotional videos for therapists there. So yeah. it, it- And that's it, your main thing. When you're doing work in Italy, then you need to be in Italy for that. So that justifies why you took that trip. So that's your main thing. Um, we can work online from anywhere, but when you're like, well, I couldn't do those videos for people in Italy unless I was there. So that justifies that, that tax write off. Already my anxiety level is going down. <laughs> you are amazing. Okay. So other things, other right? things, let's, let's do it. Let's other things. Okay. So you're, you're going to deduct anything that is related to your business operations. So if you have an office and we'll talk, I want to talk a little just for a minute about home offices. If you have a, an office, anything that's going to be living and staying in your office, your furniture, your supplies, um, anything that's going to be there is going to be deductible. Anything that allows you to continue your training, your knowledge, things like supervision, things that are related to your clients, those are going to be deductible. You're allowed to deduct things to further your skills. You are not allowed to deduct education that lets you become a therapist in the first place. So they don't let you deduct things to be, enter a new field. But once you are in the field and now I want to get trained in EMDR or I want to do EFT, now I'm already a therapist. I'm already in the field. I can deduct pretty much any training. Wow. So this may, means that people who say that um, they can deduct their education in marriage and family therapy when you're in grad school, that's a no-no. Well, as a personal, like sometimes there are personal deductions Got that it. we can take in terms of educational loans or um, interest. Or, or the, like there's some personal deductions you can take. But as far as a business deduction, only the trainings and things, not the, the thing that got you into got the field. It. So got you, you have to qualify. There's a lot more qualifications for to be able to take other types of education as a personal deduction. Absolutely. So uh, furniture for your office space. Furniture. Anything uh, that is pertaining to enhancing your clinical work, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And also your trainings as well. And Yes. And um, any advertising, marketing, your website, you get a logo, develop the cost to develop the logo, your business cards, brochures, any professional fees or dues, your, your memberships that are annual, any insurance, uh, subscriptions to things. Um, and so two other things that I think are, are big that people are always interested in. One is health care premiums. Yes. Health care premiums is one of the very, very few personal deductions. Like I'm getting health care for myself personally. It's not related to my clients, not related to my office, not related to my training. Um, but it is they they uh, IRS encourages people to be insured. So if if you are not eligible for any other care, you cannot get coverage through yourself or an employer through another job. If you're eligible for for an employer provided plan, they want you to take it. But you can't get an, another plan, and you have income. You you don't get to take this deduction if you didn't make any money. So you have to have income. And what's the other one? Oh, let, let, let's say with oh. that. Let's say with that with with the health in, insurance. So let's say I pay for my own health insurance. Mm -hmm. However, if my company, which is an S corp, will mm -hmm. offer it, I can take it through my S. I can I can take that as well. Yeah. So it it can be either in your name or the name of the business. So your business could provide health insurance, or you could just on your own buy health insurance. That's the third rule: is it either in your name or the name of the business. Um, so even sole proprietors that don't have an S corp or an LLC can deduct their health insurance premiums. The only tricky thing is with a sole proprietor for you, which is almost most people in California end up being an S corp. I didn't mean sole proprietor, I meant S corp. You, um, there's a little, you have to it, run it through your business so that it gets added to your W2 and then you take it on your personal taxes. Oh so my. Your, your tax accountant's the person to like help you with that. But yes, well, I, I've heard this before and actually, you know, I actually do it. I, I got Blue Cross Blue Shield <clears throat> through Cat Family Therapy. <clears throat> but you're saying that if you're a sole proprietor mm -hmm. and you're, you're paying it through mm -hmm. your business account or whatever? Yep. It could be personal or business. They don't care. They don't care. You get that deduction. It actually goes on your personal portion of your return, but your business could pay it because the 
and the plan could be in the name of your business or your own name. And this is huge for people who, it's a gigantic worry for someone who's self-employed is buying the health insurance. So yes. this is just small help that you can get that insurance premiums tax deductible. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make up for what you have to pay for it. We know how expensive it is, but it certainly helps them. So there's a couple of rules. Like I mentioned, you want to make sure you qualify to take it. But for a huge number of self-employed, they qualify to take the, the health insurance premiums. Everybody, stop what the hell you're doing, okay? Because this is definitely the issue if you have your own business, right? Mm -hmm. Health insurance. Now, I, ha I knew about the corporate part. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that there are some ways to get if you are sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. This is just amazing. So before we move on, you're going to have a whole list of... Um, Tax write-off, expenses, all of that stuff that we can use, right? When, when, and and you, if you have my link to uh, simpleprofit.com, when you go to that thing, maybe the third or fourth link down, it will say tax deductions for clinicians. Click on that link, and I have a two-page front and back um, downloadable checklist to make sure that you're getting all of your deductions. Okay, hold on, hold on. So already, because I'm such an – I get excited about everything, I, I can already – I'm putting you on the uh, – uh, uh, to, to present uh, not your typical <laughs> psychotherapist in the future. This is, this is crazy stuff. This is, this is so great because you can just set me up in a corner during the break. <laughs> right. And I'll just do a little side presentation. Right. And you have mentioned Ernesto on many of your lives, how uh, at least one, I remember very clearly talking about how just give stuff away, just be out in the world, just give of yourself for what you can. And that is my philosophy. Exactly. I have tons and tons of free information um, on my on my website, and uh, while I have um, courses and a couple of things where I do, you know, teaching that they're more involved, if I can just give you some information and make it clear, like a lot of what I have is it's it's on the IRS website, but go try and read the IRS website and see how much you know how fun that is. Yeah, absolutely. I take it, make it clear and understandable. So for those of you who are watching, yes, she gives free stuff away, but please pay for some of the things that she's. <laughs> Honestly, this is just some things that is worth dropping money for because it really will help you. So um, check out our website. A lot of great things. So what's next? Okay. And one last thing before we go. Before we go well, to no, we're, no, we're not done yet. I'm okay, not okay. letting you go okay, yet. What's next? Home office deduction. Here's another thing that people care so much about. Home office deduction. Can I take the home office deduction? So I spent weeks, weeks researching the home office deduction because um, when I went to check out with my colleagues, with other tax professionals, to make sure that I was getting the information correct, I got a lot of conflicting information mm. back. And what turns out, the confusion was, is that there was a tax court case that the IRS took all the way to the Supreme Court of our country, all the way up there, and they won. And then they mm. turned around and reversed themselves and mm. allow a deduction for your home office if you just use it for admin. So this is confusing because a lot of people will go to their CPA and they'll say, well, I do all my billing and all my notes and everything in my home office. It's a dedicated space. I don't use it for anything else. I use it every single week. And they'll say no, because there was this tax court case. Well, guess what? That tax court case was then listed as an example of when you can take the deduction in the IRS current um, guidance. Tax code. Mm -hmm in the guidance, like in there, here's how we want you to interpret the tax code. And uh, I ran it by just to make, I don't, I don't like to be wrong and not because I just always want to be right. I just don't want to mislead people. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to rely on my information and they find out that, that, that it was incorrect. So I ran it by um, my, prof I belong to a professional organization that has a research group. I ran it by the research group to make sure that I was giving, and I wrote a blog very lengthy on my website when you go to there you'll see a, a blog and there's a home office deduction blog and you can read that and you if you do so many of us are doing things from home right either coaching or therapy and payroll and anything so whether you have it as an admin space or whether it's the primary place the principal place that you earn your revenue as long as you set it up properly and you don't use it for other things and you use it regularly there's a couple other rules you can qualify to deduct the home office deduction and it's a little complicated like there's a couple different ways you can calculate your deduction one is a big pain in the butt but it gives you more of a deduction 
And the other one's super simple, but it gives you a smaller deduction. Um, so I explain all that in my blog. And that's a big one for therapists. The more of us that work online, the more we want to know if we can take some of our home office. That is, that is just, um, okay, so the information, you know, I, I invited <laughs> you on to have a conversation about this, but now there's so many things that I didn't even know. So for, in my house, I actually have, two rooms that I dedicate to, you know, video recording. And then the other room is to do office stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, admin. So you're saying that um, it, it, if I designate any of those rooms, two of those rooms, it's actually a tax write-off depending on what qualifies and what doesn't qualify. As long as you meet the rules and then there's a couple different ways to calculate it. Um, and one's a pain in the butt, but the other one is a smaller deduction. So it, it's definitely something to talk to an accountant about. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like people to know that this thing happened with this tax court case and then the IRS reversing themselves and not all CPAs realized there was that reversal. So they will tell people, no, you can't have a second office. If you have a paid office, you can't have one at home. That's not true. Wow. Or you can't deduct it if you just use it for admin. That's not true. So I provide in there all the links to the IRS um, and I explain where the confusion comes from among accountants so so that you can take you could take my blog with you to your accountant and say okay tell me like here's where it says I can take this deduction and I'm giving you all the information there that's amazing so for those of you who are moving into a space of online therapy right mm -hmm. and if you have a room where you're designated to see your clients via online telehealth medicine all of those things and for those of you who are coaches as well this will work out for you mm -hmm. a lot of tax write-offs so uh, and you it, know what? Not even just a room. It can be a part of a room. It doesn't have to be a whole room. This is so it can awesome. Be a part of a room. Okay. Okay. So, so for those of you who are watching, please, please, please visit her website, <laughs> give her a call, um, pay for coaching from, from her and consultation because yes, she gives a lot of free information. Jeannie gives a lot of free information, but you know, at the same time, uh, her generosity you know, she needs to sustain her life, right? So I, I know how it feels. I'm a foodie. I need people to pay for my food. You know? So yeah. anything else? I, I've yeah. Got so, um, so for, I'm sorry. Hold on real yeah, quick. So for those of you who are watching, um, we if you have any questions, I have my cell phone next to me and I'm watching your comments here. Um, and so if you have any uh, questions for Jeannie here, please go ahead and ask it and I'll ask her and then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. What, what else you got? So a couple other things that we haven't talked about yet. Um, uh, even if, even if you don't meet all the rules for home office deduction, but you have furniture that you use for business or your computer that you use for business. Uh, one thing about our phones and our computers, if we use something that's partially for business and partially for personal use, mm -hmm. like if this is your only phone, then the IRS is going to be like, then you must use it for personal, right? So if you have something where you use it for both, you want to allocate a certain amount to business and a certain amount. And, when, and usually the term we use is be reasonable. And they'd be like, well, what does that mean? No, it actually just means be reasonable. We're therapists. We're reasonable people. Right. What do I really use my phone for? You know, maybe it's 50% personal. And since I have an online business, I'm on my phone all the time on Facebook. People can see that. So I have evidence <laughs> that I'm on um, using my phone a lot for business. But maybe it's 50-50 because I get calls from my kids' school and, um, you know, I'm calling my mom on this phone. So I want to allocate a, por a be reasonable portion to personal. And then I deduct the portion that's my related to my business. Um, so what a printer, if you have a printer that lives in your office, that also could be allocated between personal and business if you use it for both. Um, services, like online services, fax service, or psychology today ads. QuickBooks. Your accounting, especially your QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. And um, website we talked about. What else did we miss? Uh, let's see. I have my list out here. Banking. One of the things that people often wonder about and it's a very common question is credit card fees. So if I use Stripe or Square or PayPal or something like that, um, can I deduct the fees? It only matters. You can, you just can't deduct them twice. So if the fee is already like when, when, when Square deposits into my bank account, it's already taken the fee out. If I record that smaller number, well, I've already recorded the fee. That's right. It's in there. But if I record my actual session fee, then I could put the 
um, ex the, the credit card fee as a, an expense. Got and it. then the bottom line will be the same. I only got the amount after the fee yeah. and I want to make sure my bottom line is correct. And for those of you who have Square, Square actually gives you at the end of the month or at the end of the week how much uh, uh, fees you uh, um, accrued mm -hmm. throughout the time. So I keep a list of that and I send it over to my tax guy. Right. And so that's the main thing is that it's deductible for sure. You just want to make sure, did you already net it into your deposit amount? Got it. And so Got you want to make sure you don't deduct it twice. Um, but otherwise, you know, bank fees, if your bank charges you a, a fee, um, you know, your accountant, if you have an accountant, do your taxes. Same thing if they do personal and business taxes, you want to ask them how much of your fee is for my yeah. business taxes. Yeah. And deduct that's the my, business portion. Yeah, that's my favorite part. That's my favorite. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to close the door because my door opened slightly and I'm, it's kind of creeping me out right now. No okay. one's in the, in the office. I don't right want now. anyone to be creeped out. No, right hold on, hold on. Well, I'll look to see if anyone's asked any questions yet. Yes. I don't, I don't think there's any questions. I think we just have a lot of people soaking up the information. Yeah, yeah. So the, right? this is a, this is great. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's we, don't, <laughs> we don't know what to ask. You know, we don't know um, how to ask it. But this is a way for us to kind of get people understanding and get people aware of some of the resources, which is you've just given tons of great information. And it seems like this is not the only time I'm going to have you on a live streaming video about this. Okay, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So we wanted to, I also had on my list that we're going to talk about maybe some strategies to keep track of all of yes. this stuff. Good. And this is also a very, very common question that people want to know. And if you just have, it's just yourself as a therapist, you don't have any employees. If you want to use a spreadsheet and you feel most comfortable with that, that's fine. A spreadsheet can work okay if it's just you. If you're going to have employees, if you're going to have TAV family therapy, I'm guessing you would never do that on a spreadsheet. Um, it would be too much. So if, if you're going to... Uh, even if you anticipate growing into a group, it's a good idea to get an accounting system. Mm -hmm. And your accounting system is not your EHR. Your EHR tracks your client, your session, does your billing, all this stuff. It does great stuff, we, you know, very useful stuff. But your accounting system is different. And your accounting system doesn't need to have any client info in it. Mm. Um, it's, it's not necessary. It pulls from your bank. And your bank doesn't have any client info in it. Yeah. So you just have your information come from your bank and even if you use a spreadsheet it's coming from your bank start with your bank your bank account mm -hmm. have a separate account for your business start with that, that separate your, everything that, yeah separate you, everything yeah it's right. two, and, and and a lot of times people say well i don't think so I, need, I take really good track but wait until something happens or you get too big it can be a mess if there is a mistake if you lose your data going back through your personal account to identify your business transactions most people would only ever do that once and then they would separate it. Oh yeah. My, my accountant was like, you know, for 2017, why don't we make it easier on easier. ourselves here? So Let's make what, it simple. Right. So in 2017, I actually separated all three of my businesses. Um, so that, uh, filmit.com used to be on my personal, it was just all over the place. So now I have a separate filmit.com, uh, um, uh, bank account and then cat family therapy, cat family therapy was always separate. And then now I have um, Cab Academy, which, you know, everything is all separate. Everything, even and my- Can you even imagine trying to keep track? It is, how do you run three businesses, right? You do it because you have good processes in place. If you did not have good processes in place, you could not be effective. You'd spend a lot more time doing admin stuff. Absolutely. Oh, I, I, I experienced that 2017 <laughs> when I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, this is the biggest expense. Because, you know, I travel all over the place. I want to make sure which is- what I paid for airplane for uh, speaking engagements in, right. in, for under cab family therapy or speaking engagements for filmit.com. And now for cab Academy, I'm having to sit there going, okay, I paid for this and this and this, even my credit cards now are separate. I'm, I'm, I'm using it to separate. So I have a credit card for cab uh, Academy and then every other credit card that I have is for Cat Family Therapy or Filmit.com. Right. I know it's I, a I don't headache. have my wallet here, but if I pulled it out, I'd be like, okay, so here's my personal debit, my personal credit. Now here's my Jenny LM Jenny Shot Miller LMFT debit card, credit card. Here's my simple profit debit card, credit card. It, you know, I've got them all lined up there. And you got to make sure you don't pull out the wrong one. Sometimes I'll be buying something. I'll be like, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be in Vegas and putting it in the uh, <laughs> ATM and go, Ooh, there's, they just freeze my account, which happened before, unfortunately. Um, this is amazing. 
let's move Great. on. We got, yeah. you got more. Yeah. So let's see. So, um, okay. So if you don't use a spreadsheet, keep it separate. Um, QuickBooks is the most popular accounting, uh, software, but I'll tell you, and, and I don't know if people find this interesting or not comment if you don't find this interesting, but I find it interesting. The tax people, um, are really upset with QuickBooks because they're advertising to their own clients. So they're, they're, <laughs> the, the QuickBooks, even though the tax and accountants are QuickBooks mainstay, they are saying, don't go to your accountant, come straight to us. And it's a little bit, they're linked up with, with Tur TurboTax. And if anyone's seen the adver advertisements for TurboTax, oh, I'm going to mess it up because I don't know what the exact phrase, but something like any person, anybody that can be a tax person or something like that. And the tax people are like, their minds are going because <laughs> they're, they're like, uh, TurboTax makes you a tax preparer the way WebMD makes you a doctor. Oh my God. They're really mad. Um, but it, it's, it's true that if you have a very, very simple, simple business, if you just have a, a sole proprietorship or an LLC file, uh, it's just, here's my income, here's my expenses, especially maybe a part-time practice and you've done your own taxes before. So you're familiar with that process. You can, you can do your own tax. I'm not going to lie to people and say, you can't do your own taxes. You can do your own taxes. But if you have an S corp, you are not going to do your own taxes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and if you have a group, anything, a tax preparer is never a bad idea. Even if you have a small part-time practice, get a, get someone now so that down the road, they can be your business partner for years and years and years. Yeah. And yeah. This is a hard thing for people too, because sometimes if you walk into your accountant's office and you leave feeling dumb, get a new one, yeah. keep looking, you know, maybe that's the person that does your taxes this year because you ran out of time, but you need someone who will see you as a business owner who knows their stuff and is deserving of respect and can take the time to, to really treat you as a professional um, as you are treating them. I love that. I love that you said that because, you know, the, one of the things that I, I hate feeling because there's running my businesses, all kinds of stuff comes up, right? And uh, we'll, we'll be talking in the future about mindset, but, you know, really, no matter how many times people tell me, you know, it, don't think about that stuff. You're, you're good, Ernesto. Um, you, you're doing things, the, you're heading in the right direction. Right. There is still stuff that comes up like, ooh, you know, yeah. I don't want to be judged, but you know, no matter how, no matter how much I project that I am an, a secure individual, there's sometimes when it just creeps up and go, Ooh, uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I know a lot of people watching will have read, you know, the four agreements. A lot of us read that in school. I don't know if you read it. One of the uh, agreements is don't take things personal. And I, and I say it easier said than done because when someone says something to me that indicates they don't think much of me, it is kind of personal. It, it is. And I'm going right. to, it's going to trigger my own stuff because it's personal. And so you want to have an accountant and there are accountants out there who will treat you with respect. Oh, my, my accountant is, is awesome. He even jokes around sometimes when, when I walk in, he goes, you're fairly quiet right now. Did you just come back from Vegas? <laughs> like, no, of course not. Defensive. Yeah. What are you right. talking about? And, and, uh, and I tell people too, you know, your business more than your account never will. Mm. So you, you know, when someone comes in to me for therapy and I know I'm not the only one that does that, I, I say, you are the expert on your life. I know a few things. Let's put our, you know, our knowledge together and see if we can make the problem better. And I see it as a collaborative experience. Mm. And I think it should be the same with your accountant that they know accounting and you know your business more than them let's put your heads together and then get to you know what's going to be the right answer for you uh, accounting and tax wise so I'm, I'm talking to Jeannie she is a family therapist a CPA licensed CPA worth giving a call and schedule a an appointment to, yeah. to really get her, her her expertise on this and she's I've, I've uh, connected her website so you can go and Look at the blog. She's. You, you also have a course coming up. Is that what I heard? So I have um. I have a couple things going on right now. I I always have a lot of things going on, but right now I have my um getting started course. So this is a course for if you're new to private practice or if you've been in private practice for a while but you have been ignoring the admin stuff, and ignoring your accounting. It's the it's the overview. It's 
five weeks. It very um, covers all of the getting started things that um, you need to know at the start of your private wow. practice. I also have a mini course for estimating your quarterly taxes. So the fourth uh, quarter, fourth estimated payment is due January 15th, which is only two days. If you're in a panic, um, reach out to me and I'll, I'll help you decide if that course is appropriate for you. I don't, I don't want anyone to pay for my courses if they're not appropriate for you. Also, later today, I have coming out my spreadsheet uh, download, which you can buy. And with that comes a basic, if you just want the basic, basic, basic spreadsheet, and an advanced spreadsheet where you can download from your bank, categorize it, and it's slightly automated with videos that explain how to use them. So that's going to be coming out later today. Can you tag me on this? <laughs> sure. That's crazy. That's crazy. okay. And, and plus it's, it's starting the first, you know, it, we're 13 days into 2020. So this is a good way to kind of start everything new and just move forward yes. from there. It is a great mm -hmm. time to get on top of it. I mean, there's no bad time, but it's extra good time right at the beginning of the year to just say, I'm going to get everything organized and, uh, and, 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 and you feel better. You sleep better at night. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I'm keeping track of two things and I, I want to show people this. You're going to be proud of me. I'm always, I'm very kinetic and old school. So this is mm -hmm. my, <laughs> this is my calendar kind of thing. So my therapist actually, and I, I get financial counseling, <clears throat> uh, literally psychotherapy, not, not counseling, but psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that came up was I spend a lot of money on food and gas. And I'm not shamed for it, but he just wants me to keep track. And I can tell you now, for two weeks I've been doing this, mm -hmm. and I look at how much I spend on money, and I'm like, what the F? <laughs> <laughs> How much of that money could I take to Vegas if I? I it? know. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> but sorry. It's a mindfulness thing, right? When you are looking at it, you are more aware. You feel a little bit more en empowered to make changes. So, mm -hmm. knowledge I don't know. is power. I don't know, but we'll see. Your so, knowledge is power, and knowledge about our own processes. Absolutely, power. absolutely. So, I want to end with um, some words of wisdom. For 2020, and like I said, for those of you who are watching, um, if you haven't uh, registered for the Dr. Typical Psychotherapist Summit, uh, you will see Jeannie there. Um, literally, you will see her there. You take a selfie. Um, she will. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about. It's all my summits. It's, it's all about selfies. It, nothing else matters. Um, get a hold of her. Talk to her. The link uh, to the Dr. Typical Psychotherapist Summit in Florida is above and. Her link to Simple Profit with tons, tons of information is also there. And I'm looking forward to um, uh, downloading uh, your product later on today. But before we end, words of wisdom. Words of, so two things. One is I want to make sure people also know about my group, that they can come to Simple Profit. And if you, if you search on Facebook, Simple Profit, there's one specifically for mental health clinicians. So Simple Profit for mental health clinicians. I have a couple other groups, but the mental health clinicians is the largest and has the most information in it. All my stuff's on my website. But you can come to my group and actually ask me questions, and I'm there all the time answering them. Uh, words of wisdom. You can do this. If you're feeling overwhelmed, slow it down, gather some information, get some support, and just keep on going through it. Hmm. When we avoid, we know our problems fester and grow. It's just as true for accounting as it is for other areas of our life. So don't let that happen. Just plug along. And if today's not the good day, put it down today, look at it again later in the week. But don't, don't just avoid it. You can do this. My hope is that I help a as many as I can reach feel empowered around the money piece. Well, I can tell you now I'm feeling empowered and inspired at the same time. So this is exciting times uh, for those of you out there who are like Jeannie said, if, if you are afraid to step into this, don't be, it's normal. Um, I've been there. Sometimes I wake up in the morning going, Oh my gosh, what's happening. But I read something incredibly, um, uh, a goal for me by Robert Kiyosaki. He says, the rich has a lot of money, but the wealthy does not worry about money. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to be. It's not so much of the numbers. You are wealthy if you're not worrying about 
your finances. And people like Jeannie and professionals like her help us not to worry about this stuff, you mm -hmm. know? And the more you grow, the more you have to be, you, you will be confronted with this stuff, right? Right. And you don't have to have millions and millions of dollars to be wealthy and to not worry. You just have to have good systems and processes in place and know that you're on top of it and you're comfortable with your decisions and you know where you've been and you know where you're headed. Yep. No shame. No shame. You know, we, we got you. We're going to support you. But <clears throat> Jeannie, this was fun. Yay. You're going to come I back again? Of course. Of course. <laughs> All right. So look right, for Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, everybody. This is Ernesto, licensed marriage and family therapist. And Jeannie, family therapist and a CPA website is on this link. Visit her, give her a call, private message her. She's amazing. And um, your Facebook group. Yep. Simple Profit for Mental Health Clinicians. I'm there. I watch it. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually on my feed. It's <laughs> one of the Facebook groups that I actually enjoy going because I'm like, oh, a lot of good information. So, Great. aloha, everybody. I'm going to try to get over this cold, this, this cough. It's kind of bad. <laughs> Sorry if I've been coughing this whole time. But, Jeannie, thank you so thank much you. for your time. I know you're very busy. Thank you, thank you so much. All right. Aloha. Bye -bye.